Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your host, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. We are going to be talking to another dynamic woman. I mean, listen, so dynamic that she was in this 2023 top 50 most dynamic women in Charlotte. I mean, side note, remember I was in there too. Mm. Anyhow, <laughs> Leslie Ellis, how you doing? I'm good, Elizabeth. How are you today? Good. I'm so excited to talk to you because, um, like I said, we were at that same event, but mm-hmm. I don't remember if we were able to connect. I don't, I don't think so. I there was a lot of women there. I mean, there was, you know, probably 40 out of 50 were in the room. So, and, and family members, it was a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, so that's why I'm so honored that you took time out to come and talk to us today because um, you're doing some amazing work out there. Your company is Ma- uh, Mindful Change Consulting. Meaningful, meaningful change consulting. Oh, you know what I wrote down? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I wrote down mindful. I don't know why I did that, but meaningful. Same though, right? Meaningful. It's, it's pretty darn close. It it requires being mindful in order to make sure it's meaningful. Right. Okay. Tell us about you one <laughs> and then tell us about your company. Yeah, absolutely. And so first, very grateful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I actually own two businesses, but I think the one you primarily, uh, you know, are speaking of is Meaningful Change Consulting. So it is a change advisory firm where we work with leaders at all types of organizations and industries of all sizes to help them navigate complex, large scale transformational change in their organizations. Um, It's a skill set leaders can continue to improve. We're not doing so well out there in the corporate world. And um I've actually ended up making a a whole career out of being a change practitioner and uh, opened a business about eight years ago. And here I am still supporting clients and I love doing it. And I've even started to expand into helping practitioners out there up their game as well so they can help their clients be better at it. Awesome. So let's break that down. Yeah. (laughs) Because, you know, I want to make sure that people understand when you say you are changing yes. things that they know exactly what you mean by that. Sure. Let me give some examples. So Ooh. a lot of organizations are going through what we call digital transformations. It's a nice big buzzword. Basically, they're changing their core technology of their organizations. That's a really common company change. There's also the whole very popular topic of the future of work and remote work. That in itself is a huge change in the organizational world, and they're still navigating it. And then, of course, you see the different continuums of the we're mandating when you have to be here, what time you have to be here. We're going to actually monitor your badge to giving a lot of choice and autonomy to their employees so everybody can determine which they think is working better. Um Those are some like really real life examples. Companies also struggle with employee retention. And a lot of times it comes down to uh, shifts in their culture that might be needed or certain management techniques need to shift Um, or maybe they're not hiring the right people for their company. And so that's why there's turnover. There's all kinds of reasons it happens, but all of those are changes that organizations are dealing with constantly right now. Um, There's plenty of others, but those are some really prominent ones that I think most people understand. And, and let's dig in that because like, like you said, there are so many of them, (laughs) but let's talk about, I want to really talk about the two that really, because I'm being a little selfish, guys, because I want to talk about me. So- <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, my company is doing, we want to talk about that digital switch, mm-hmm. right? We literally just switched over systems. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, honey. Tell me about it. <laughs> I want to pull my hair out, like just every lock. However, it's so, it is so important to make the change. 
And um, as you can speak on, people are making the changes for different reasons. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the reason of when you have outgrown your system and how do you, one of the things, how do you know you out, have outgrown your system, right? Because a lot of times people keep trying to make it fit. Mm -hmm. um, how do they kind of know when it's time to make that change? Yeah, well, actually you called out the one primary reason. When you're trying to make everything work and it's taking you more time than it should, a system or a technology is just meant to be an enabler of getting things done faster, more efficiently, uh, more effectively. And if you're all of a sudden, it's more work to run the system <laughs> than it is to leverage the system to help you do your work. That's a key indicator right there that you're spending way too much time managing the system as opposed to helping, having the system help you manage your business. Um, so that's a key indicator, especially for, for entrepreneurs and CEOs of smaller businesses. Right. Um, other indicators might be that it's an older technology and there might be new technology out there that is going to actually serve your business and your customers better. Um, and that also leads to, you might be hearing your customers giving you feedback. Maybe they're not getting their automatic notifications. Maybe it's very difficult for them to sign into their side of the portal. Maybe they're, it's just an inconvenience to them or they don't want to use it and you need them to. Or there's a lot of glitches. Those are all customer service impacts, customer experience impacts. So you may also might want to rethink your systems if you're leveraging your systems to support your customers that way. That's another really common reason I see smaller businesses make the shift. Um, it's better technology out there that has a much better experience for those that are using it. Wow, that's a good point. You know, um, yeah, that sucks if the customer using it is complaining about getting stuff or not getting stuff. That That's time for a change right there, Leslie. It is time for a change. <laughs> and, and I'm, Elizabeth, I tell you, so I'm not really a, an expert in what to change. I'm actually a process expert. So I'm a process and a systems expert in what to change right. um, on how to do it. Right, how, how to make that change. It. Position, right? Right. So if you would have come to me and said, hey, I think I might need a new system, I may help you determine is that right for you? And I might be able to offer you some folks in my network who would help you figure out what the right system is for you. But I would assist you in how do you actually make that transition effectively so that your employees, you, your customers, it's a smoother transition and not so rocky and bumpy where you have employees complaining and you're sweating all the time. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I just worked the last two weekends trying to figure this out. And I didn't expect to um, or there's just a lot of pain on the customer side. So we we work to proactively plan through all of that and mitigate all of that so that it's a smooth experience and people are more likely to adopt faster. See, that's important. And thank you for making that very clear distinction of what it is that you do, because, you know, everybody's in the transformation. We don't know what that means to, you know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? So <laughs> I, I need you. <laughs> yeah. It just means there's a really big change that has a lot of complexity to it. Bottom line, there are there are official definitions to what a trans what truly constitutes a transformation. But the bottom right. line, it's a very complex transformation with a lot of tentacles that need attended to if you actually want it to be successful. Right. And um, had I known this prior, <laughs> Leslie, we would have had a conversation <laughs> because I did not know how difficult it was to get everything, but it's going to be worth it. Totally. In like a month. No. <laughs> <laughs> Though you wished it would have been worth it a couple of weeks ago when you first absolutely, did it. Right? <laughs> absolutely. There you go. You, and that's you... where some of the value comes in that I bring to the table is if we're able to proactively help you plan or mitigate when you're starting to see, uh oh, there's, this is a lot. How do we mitigate that? How do we help you make that a more smooth transition and make the right decisions so that it's not so much heartache? I love that. I love that. And that's so important, like you said, for the small businesses, um, because, you know, we still on the hustle. We're trying to still work to let's know, figure out this new system like wait. And so yeah. 
you sitting down trying to watch the football game. I'm just going to use an example of, <laughs> of me again the other day. It was so funny. My husband was all into the football game and I'm like, yeah. Working on the system. Working on, I'm trying to figure out this system, sir. Yes, I'm so happy they're doing good. Woohoo! Don't even know what happened, but I'm glad. I don't know what happened, but because you're excited, so am I. But you I know? mean, that's that's a great point, Elizabeth. Even in larger companies and smaller companies, people will give up their their bound their work life balance or work life integration for big changes that happen in big organizations and they will literally burn out because there's so much change happening and not all of it is done well or thought through very well and or planned designed well is another way to say that and then they end up spending and I used to be somebody who did this years ago I, there was one uh, I was with a financial services company I spent what probably two three uh, three months of my time fixing something that was not thought was a big impact for a change. I spent three months of my time full-time plus in wow. the evenings, reworking it all to clean it all up because the senior executives of the company were like in a tizzy over what happened. And so my work-life integration was like zero <laughs> at that right. point. It was all right. work integration and no life. <laughs> um, so, but it in, even big companies, whatever, it takes up. I think as entrepreneurs or even small business owners, we kind of expect we have to figure out a little bit more. We have more things we're responsible for, but it happens in big companies too, where you just have your, you're an employee and you have your world and your box, but you can end up being completely overwhelmed when change isn't done well. And companies then wonder why employees don't feel satisfaction, why uh -huh. they jump ship, why they don't feel valued and taken care of. And they wonder. Right. That makes sense. And, and the, you know, thank you for letting us know about your services because I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be reaching out, make sure we know how Me to, <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. how can we uh, connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll make sure to give you my information if you want to post it with the podcast, but you can just um, find me on LinkedIn at Leslie A. Ellis. Or you can email me at leslie at meaningfulchangeconsulting.com. All one word, meaningfulchangeconsulting.com. If you put mindful in there, it's not going to get to me. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure you put meaningful, uh, changeconsulting.com. And then um, I'll just reach back out to you. And don't hesitate, even if you think it's something small, sometimes we underestimate the impact of, of changes. And I can help you think through that. Um, even if it's just one or two phone calls helping you, you know, get a strategy together on how best to approach it. Right, right. Yes, definitely. It is meaningful change consulting. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's about positive impact, in my opinion. Yeah, change yeah. does not have to be hard and it doesn't have to be painful. But for some reason, we love to make it that way, especially in organizations. A absolutely. Be and, I, and I think that one of the reasons um, that is, and you, you would know better than me, but I think the reason it is, is because it is a change. The brain, the brain perceives change as a threat, go dating all the way back to prehistoric times. And we have to retrain ourselves that it's not, I mean, honestly, from the time we were born, Elizabeth, we weren't afraid of much of anything except loud noises and the fear of falling when you're born. That's the only two things you're afraid of. Right. Side of that, when you're a kid, you're willing to try anything to get what you want. Yeah. As adults, we teach then children, don't do that. That's not okay. Don't make those changes. Don't try that. Don't try that again. You're going to hurt yourself if you don't, if you don't do it different. We teach to be afraid of change. And then we go to corporate which is all full of change. I think um, in the last five years, 2017 to 2022, 200% increase in disruption across the world. Absolutely. And the five years before that, it was 4%. <laughs> That's quite a jump. That's a huge <laughs> jump. And, and I um, know that COVID had a lot to play in that, you know? Huge. So COVID. that's the other thing. I'm, oh, go ahead. No, COVID. please, go ahead. Let's talk COVID. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to talk to you about that remote yeah um integration right mm -hmm. how how do you go about that with with the company 
when would you know if it's a good thing? Should I hire a remote VA or should I allow my employees to uh, work from home? What is the good balance? You know, can we talk about, look, I didn't ask you like five questions, but that's, that's I know you're stacking questions on me. I'm stacking them on you. I'm stacking them on you. But, you know, just to give us that idea, yeah. you know, when people are listening to this, I want them to go, oh, wow. Yeah. And and the the advantages and the disadvantages. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that um, this is a little tougher question because uh, especially with smaller business owners, this is a lot about preference. It's about what you want. And then it's also what your business needs to be successful. Um, so you have to marry those two up and then decide how critical is it that this person is local to me and available to me physically or not. And so they, you really have to marry that up first, especially when you're, and, and I honestly think managers in bigger corporations probably need to be a bit more honest about this too. Is it a fear based decision to keep people close and in person to you or is it an is it a business necessity the success of our team is impacted if you're not here i want to pause right there can yeah, you break that down you, I, <laughs> you know i got questions you got can, questions <laughs> can you break that down yeah um i can so first of all you, we all as as business i'm a business i actually own two businesses one's right. an off-grid vacation cabin rental business um in the blue ridge mountains I have to ask myself, what's the vision for my company? What do I want for my company? And then I have to ask myself, what's it going to take in my business to get there? And be honest with myself about what's required and what allowances I'm willing to make in order to have what I want and develop the business to be what I need it to be. If I'm clear on that, which I'll be honest, I have to revisit it quite frequently because my what I wanted a year and a half ago is actually a little different than what I Dang. want now. Right. Change. Right. So you have to be thoughtful and revisit it and be and be clear and then make decisions based on that. So if the decision before you is, do I bring in a new virtual assistant or do I bring in a, a, an executive assistant that's on site? I want to look at my what I want for myself as well as what my business needs to be thriving and what's necessary and have the honest conversation with myself is if I'm going against my vision and it's not really necessary for somebody to be in person, but I decide, I think they need to be in person. It's the best way. I would ask yourself, and you don't have to tell anybody but yourself, it's okay, or get a coach that you can confide in and talk about it. But is it a fear-based decision that all of a sudden it doesn't, your business doesn't require it, but you're requiring it? Why? Is there a legit reason or is it because you're afraid that you don't have control of the person? Mm -hmm. You're afraid that if you can't see them, they're not doing or you can't trust them. Be honest with yourself. Is it about you or is it about the role? Right, right. If you can be honest with yourself there, then those decisions should help you decide whether or not a role is okay being remote or not. I love that. That would that be my advice especially for small business owners, but it works for managers and companies too. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it has been um, really trying this, this whole corporation. Do you hear it on the news? It's, it's a big subject. People are in pain. It's, it's a pain point. It, it is. <laughs> at this time or do we go back they're trying to force people to go back people are like i get more work done at home where others are not doing anything at home you know and and it's so funny we were literally just talking about that can you kind of break it down for us as to how do just like you were just saying about with the um remote work how do a company determine Oh, well, uh, that's a tough one, too, because every company is probably making decisions based on different criteria um, and honestly, executive leadership preference. Right. They're every The one thing I always love to say in change, and I, I just said it in another uh, webinar I did last week. Executives are people. They're humans and they have all the same limiting beliefs and hangups the rest of us do, even though they have big responsibility in companies. That stuff doesn't go away just because you gave them a bigger title and more money. It doesn't. 
right. unless we're doing a lot of personal work. And even then it surfaces. And that's where I come in. I teach. Yeah, that's what I do. I you, coach. They need to call Elizabeth. That's right. Call Elizabeth. I got you. And, right. But right? That's, it takes a lot. It really does. It does. And and so we we have to remember that sometimes their decisions are also influenced by that fear or lack of control. And there's another element that we don't always know. And I am somewhat suspicious of, um, but, and some people would say, oh yes, this is totally happening. And then other people will say, how do we know that? But I have to imagine that for bigger companies, there's some outside market or environmental influences on them that are incentivizing them to bring their people back. Even downtown Charlotte was a ghost town for quite a while until certain companies started bringing it back. That hurt the local inner city economy. I can't imagine that government didn't somehow get involved and say to the big executives, hey, it would be really great if you would bring some of your people back to save these small businesses that are suffering that usually have lunch and dinner and happy hour bills. And so, and dry cleaning bills and whatever well, else and, down there. And even the, just the fact of the location to rent the building itself, the office spaces, they exactly. need to come back so that, that you can, yeah, they can it, stay in business. And if the companies couldn't get out of their long, long leases, like some companies are signing 20, 25, 30 year leases with big buildings. They can't just get out of them. Um, right. Some might have been lucky too, others might not. So there's a lot of external market driven factors that are probably also influencing these executives decisions in addition to their own beliefs and potentially performance metrics of the company that not everybody is privy to. Where I think the breakdown happens, Elizabeth, is that we're not always transparent about the drivers of what the ch- is causing the change. We're afraid of what people will think if we tell them the truth. Ooh. And I'm a little bit more of, you know what? People actually understand way more. And if they're going to be upset about it, they were going to be upset about it anyways. Mm-hmm. But they will actually overcome it faster. Their brain will overcome it faster if you're more transparent because their brains will pick the different um, characteristics and domains that speak to them to get them to a place of better balance with the change and get them there faster, even if they didn't like it. And if they're part of the small percent that really doesn't like it, they'll go to a new company. Right. But it's better to be transparent about the drivers, including the external ones, than it is to hide them and people make up their own stories. We love stories. We love to make them up, right? Right. That belief system kicking in again, Right. And then here you have people that will jump ship for this for the smallest thing for to go to another company because they don't think what you're doing is right because they don't you didn't give them the information to tell them the real reasons why you just right. said come back to the office you we have their Monday Tuesdays and Wednesdays going forward period I don't really I'm not really concerned so much about your child care issues right you have to come back or you're fired instead of saying listen in order to maintain this location i have to have a some amount of people coming back i would respect that so much more yeah a company versus mandatory well why because yeah. i've been doing my work but so funny is a lot of people really are not doing their work and i wish it was a, a way that it all percent makes the larger the larger population have to suffer a little bit that's all in the case that's that you was reading my mind. Yeah, I wish that it would be a punishment. God forgive me. Some people <laughs> love to work in the office. My husband is an office man. He he yeah. worked in the office, and I'm like, I am a small. I'm on my back porch, Elizabeth, talking to you because That's it's a saying. nice day. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, nah. you're in Paris. Yeah, I don't want to go to the office. I'm not, a, <laughs> and and you better not make me right. Um, right. But, you know, I think it, it should be if you are underperforming, mm-hmm. then you got to just come on in. And like, that's a cultural thing for companies as to what they do with their underperformers, how long they keep them and how they let them influence the organization as well. That's that, again, is a company by company thing. And they have made cultural decisions that cause that to be the way they operate. And so that's a, a whole bigger change, right? If you wanted to shift something like that. 
Girl, you are busy. <laughs> There's a lot. There is no shortage of work in the change space. That is for sure. Right, right. So listen, we know that you are the amazing changer. <laughs> you're, doing, you're making all the changes happening, which we need. We really need. And I, I, I want to point out too, it's imperative for the large companies, but please, like you, like, like Leslie said earlier, little bitty things that small companies can do, it could actually make a big difference in your business. So never think of it. It's just, well, it's just three of us or just four of us, or it's just, you know, uh, just me, you know, even that just me may need to have some assistance to make it a smoother transition for you to grow. Yeah. Sometimes you just need a third party who's willing to spend, like I said, a, a couple hours with you to just help you think through it so that you have all your bases covered and it is a smooth process. Right. Yeah, I like well, it when you said that positive impact, right? It is. It is because yeah. hopefully we're not doing change for this. The original intent of most change, especially in organizations, is not malintented, malintent. Right. Usually it's for some type of really beneficial outcome, but it gets lost. And it doesn't have to if we do it well and we do it the best way we can the first time around. It's when we decide to shortchange it that it causes the havoc, the frustration, the extra money and time on the back end, missing a football game you could have been enjoying with your husband. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I because I do love football, right? Like I actually do watch it and I am all into the game. But this <laughs> time, you know, it, it wouldn't have mattered to me if I didn't watch football. It's like mm -hmm, whatever. But every time something happened, I'm like looking at wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. I need to catch the replay. Hold on. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was exactly it. They're gonna show it again. They're gonna show it again. Oh, uh, wow. it's so amazing that you were doing all of this for for such you know large companies you've worked with large companies and and even you know all companies yeah all companies multiple I think I've uh, worked since I've been in business for myself I've worked with uh, 38 39 clients in 42 country impacting 42 countries and uh, over 15 industries Okay, give people your information again. We <laughs> uh, you can find me on LinkedIn at Leslie A. Ellis, E-L-L-I-S, or Leslie at MeaningfulChangeConsulting.com is my email. Okay, and what we're going to do is make sure we have it all in the, the podcast so that they can reach out to you. But um, you know I'm going to ask because you're on this fit one. Okay, um, what's up? My whole platform is about, you know, living fit, mm -hmm. focus plus intention equals transformation, which is exactly what you do, right? I And I, I am so proud of you for stepping out and filling this role because it is a role that is truly needed, truly needed. So thank you for that. Um, you. But how do you take care of you? What does your self-care look like? Yes. Um, well, it has become more prominent in my life because I am actually pregnant with my first child. Um, I'm 12 weeks in. So uh, fitness and, and wellness is, is even more prominent than it used to be. But also um, I get up every morning and my dogs, I have two of them. We go for a walk in the woods back here for a half hour every morning. That's how I start my day. I actually don't take most calls if I'm working from home, if I'm working at a client site, it's different, but I don't take calls before 9.30 a.m. so that I have uh, everything I need to start my day effectively. It might be a little emails and work. I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm setting myself up for success because that's what I do for my clients. So I need to do it for myself. And then um, I actually ensure that I have appropriate evenings with my family so that my mind gets a rest and that we have our relationship stay strong and stable because a lot of my mental wellness also is reliant on my intimate relationships health as well. So that's important to me. So those are some of the ways. And then my husband and I love camping and that comes sometimes with a little hiking and a little stuff like that too, um, that my dogs enjoy. So we make sure that we fit all of that in, into our, our fun, crazy life. I absolutely love that. Congratulations. Oh, so excited. You. Your first one. I, I like, yay. I got 
grandbabies now, two oh, grandbabies. Nice. That's like amazing. So nice. listen, before I wrap this up, can you leave us with any words of wisdom? Yeah. Um, I'll just leave you with a quote by John Wooden. It's actually on my wall in my office upstairs. I live by this quote and it definitely tells you my mindset. Um, and I think it should be everybody else's as well. If you don't have time to do the change right the first time, when do you have time to do it over? Drop mic. <laughs> Boom. That was awesome. You know, Thank you again for coming. We really appreciate this. This is this has been really informative and I, I appreciate it every moment. And I'm sure everybody listening have they pin out. They're gonna have to listen to it again because you gave so <laughs> much information. Um, but you guys, it's your girl Elizabeth Colon. And until next week, live fit. <laughs>